Dzień dobry Państwu, nazywam się Błażej Chrapkowicz. To druga dzisiaj prowadzona przeze mnie rozmowa z gośćmi festiwalu, gośćmi online. Tym razem łączymy się z Belgią i będziemy rozmawiać z bohaterem tegorocznej retrospektywy, Fabrisem Duvelcem. Fabrice Duvelc is with us. Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, how are you? Everything okay in Belgium? Everything is fine. It's very hot. It's very, very, very oh, hot. Oh, it's today. the same here. So, in terms of our experience with uh, with the heat, uh, we can say that you're also with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. Uh, I know you're shooting your uh, your new film uh, right now, and that's the main reason you couldn't be with us uh, in person. Uh, but uh, also, uh, of course, we, I'd like to talk to you about your previous films. We are showing three of them uh, here uh, at the festival, and. To begin with, I, I, I'm wondering if you would agree with such a statement. Many of your films are actually love stories. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It's always, about, it's always about love. What else? You know? Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but uh, of course you have a very unique uh, uh, way of telling uh, this love story. These are very unique love stories. And could you tell us a bit, uh, a bit about, uh, because if it's a art conscious, like thematic artistic decision to tell these love stories, what was your main approach? What is your main approach to these stories? What story, what love stories are you interested in mainly? Well, it's, I, you know, I try, I try to tell stories and, and the love is, that it's complicated to, for me to to explain my own work, you know, because it's um, it's in the films. Uh, I, I try to I try to, to to reveal conflicts and and the impossibility to be loved, the impossibility to love, and the impossibility to be alone, and the impossibility to be together. And I think that's very cinematic. You can do a lot of stuff with that kind of stuff with that kind of idea or statement. And Because it could be it could be very funny sometimes, it could be very scary. You can dig in a very unknown, insecure environment, inner environment. That's why I try to explore that always, um, in my own way, of course. But I don't have any statement. I don't have any ID. It's it's always a question about intuition. You know, sometimes I have an idea and I dig it and, and you know, finally a movie appears. <laughs> yeah, uh, you, 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 you talked, uh, you're speaking about uh, the imp impossibility and that's why I think that your films sometimes can be characterized as melodrama even because melodrama is the genre about impossibility of love, impossibility of uh, being together and... Uh, It's rather pessimistic, uh, really, point of view. Uh, would you describe yourself as a pessimist? I'm not very optimistic, <laughs> I have to say. I love life. I do. I do. I, I do. I do. I, I try to enjoy. I try to be alive, honestly. I try to be alive at every moment. I can. I can stall. I can. I can stall to death. I know. I know that the. the, the I know that the issue is. It's fatal. I, I, we, we all know that, but that's, you know, I try to be alive. It's all what I can do. That's why I try to be loved. I try to love. I try to burn. I try to try to feel deeply. And making film makes me feel, makes me think about myself, of course, but also others. Makes me um, understand. Uh, makes me love, makes me fight. That's 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 the big goal of my life, you know, <laughs> to be alive, really alive, to have one fucking life. <laughs> I want a life. Yeah, it's gonna be only one life, but we have to make it one fucking life. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I but it's, especially yeah. today, especially today, because now you know. In that strange new brave world, everything has to be secure and everything has to be polite. Everything has to be square, you know. That's not exactly how I want to live. Yeah. So uh, 
that's an interesting thing you just said. So uh, uh, um, just to follow up, follow, follow up on that, if if we are living, as, like you say, in a world that everything has to be secure, square, very strict, do you believe also not only in feeling, but do you feelings, but do you also believe that art can transcend that? Art can be uh, can sort of uh, um, make us go out of this square world and challenge it. Yeah, I do. I do art or faith. I'm not talking about religion, but I think faith is can be relevant here. And I'm not talking about morality, of course, I, absolutely not. But I think believing strongly in something can put you in a better place. Can you can, can put you a better a, bet, a better person, a better human being, a better artist also. That's what I try to do. I, I do it my way, you know. I, I I don't say I succeed, but I try to do it. I I, I really do. Yeah. Sincerely. Uh, uh when you're talking about wanting to feel, wanting to be alive, and wanting to uh, uh, sort of uh, escape that square life, that strict life, uh, it's interesting because many of your characters, I feel, want the same. Uh, and uh, f uh, does that mean that, in your opinion, your characters are in some way uh, a they come deeply from you personally? Because when I think about about Lola Duena's character in Alleluia. She wants to feel. She wants to be alive, and of course, it, uh, it it means also that all these terrible things are happening and people are getting killed. So, uh, but uh, but yeah, I, I just thought that maybe, do you feel a personal attachment to your characters in that way? Yeah, of course, I do. I do a lot, but I don't. It's it's now because I've made, you know, I made a bunch of films that you, you can have a better idea. Um, of course, there is some motive that I reproduce all the time, but I'm not very aware of that, honestly. You know, it comes like that, and I try to push. For example, Lola Duanas in Alleluia, she's very wild and passionate. But I think passion has to be. Passion is very important for me uh, in hysteria and passion, madness, uh, blind love, because once again, it's very cinematic. It's very, we all, we all go a little bit mad sometimes. It goes from another great movie, you know. Uh, it's, it's, I do like that kind of mirror, you know. I do like those wild love story full of, um, full of, full of passion, full of red, full of flames, full of tenderness, of course. But, um, but talking about, Myself, I don't know. I, I'm not talking about me when I'm writing. You know, I'm never talking about uh, thinking about. Uh, it comes, it comes, and then I try to organize the chaos, the chaos in, during the shooting, and I do like that, and I'm good at that because I, 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 I that's why I love so much making films because the cow, the chaos is everywhere, and you have to, you, just like a sculptor, you have to deal with. The weather, the, the timing, the actors, the team, you have to deal with the elements, you have to you have to fascinate, you have to make it make make a shape of that. You understand what I mean? That's yeah, very yeah. great to do. Yeah, I think that's basically uh, some, uh, in many respects that is what art is really, yeah, to shape this uh, this uh, piece of reality that you have that you constructed in your mind to piece it in a you know, in your own way, and to organize this this chaos. And in the film, I suppose it's uh, even more difficult somehow because you, uh, first of all, you have to have money to to make feature films, of course. Uh, second of all, you're working with a lot of people, and you have to create, I imagine, a good collaboration with them. But at the same time, uh, make sure they realize your vision. Yeah, yeah, it's complicated, but it's 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 great, you know. I I grew up watching films and a lot of Polish film. I'm thinking about Zulawski. I was deeply, deeply impressed as a teenager of, of Zulawski's work. I have to say Zulawski was a very important filmmaker for me. Polanski, of course, Vashda too. But I, 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 felt, I felt very close to, 
Zulawski madness or fur, you know, that kind of um, necessity of, of making it. Of course, it's a different time today. You know, it's not the 80s anymore. People don't love the same movies anymore. You can you, you cannot push the boundaries like like in the eighties, for example, look at possession or or that kind of film. You know, it's complicated. But you know, I, I maybe maybe it looks it looks silly. I, I'm sorry, but it, it has to be. It's very sincere. When I when I go to the set, I want to burn. I want to express something. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I fail. Maybe I I do it wrong. Maybe I. But I want to. You know, I want to cons consume something, consume I, w w with the team, but it's not work. It's, it has to be a spiritual quest in a way. You know, you have an alchemist movement. You have to, you have to achieve something at the end of the day. You have to, you have, you have to be in in another position. That's very important. Yeah. I somehow I'm 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 not really surprised you mentioned Andrzej Zwawski. Uh, because uh, he is, uh, he also had a lot of stories about, about you can say, l'amour fou, uh, mm -hmm. crazy love and madness, and uh, his his also his visual style was very intense. The way camera worked, the way people were filmed, and I also see that intensity in your films. The way you move the camera, it's very very intense. You rarely uh, let us as an audience to sort of sit back and relax. <laughs> no, I want. I don't like that. I, 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 that's that's why also my my cinema is sometimes is complicated to sell and to 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 get a proper distribution because I I do my best to provoke in a way I, not provoke but to put the audience in a very uncomfortable position. For me, there is no point to make the, the audience in a very comfortable situation. I, I think it's silly. I do like as a as a cinephile go to see a. A great American, well, those days is a little bit tricky, but uh, sometimes you can you can enjoy a, a fantastic, you know, uh, American film or European and be very comfortable and feel a lot of stuff. But in my cinema, I want to I want to push, I want to really I want to push the audience. I want to make the, the audience feel uncomfortable. I want them to be to, to have to have a, to have the smell of of what what happened uh, in in. In, on the screen to have uh, the yeah you understand what I mean to have the yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, mm -hmm. the, yeah difficult approach they, they, to put them in a very tricky moral situation I I, I do like that a lot yeah. I have to say like for example in uh, in Alleluia in which we we are following the character the Lola Duenas character and we somehow I mean, at, at least I I can speak for myself I somehow empathize with her sort of need to, to to feel loved and to be loved but at the same time you really put you're being really uncomfortable with her raging jealousy which uh, leads to a uh, murder to, which leads to murder which is of course yeah. really disturbing so yeah this is a really uh, un uh, uncomfortable position uh, 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 you find yourself uh, we as an audience find yourself uh, watching your films, and I feel it's. It, I think it's a plus. I think it's a plus, uh, and uh, it. Wanted to ask you about the, the 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 genre thing because of course many of your films are characterized as horror movies. Uh, I think maybe Calvary is the like the the, the film that is maybe uh, easily uh, put into that bracket of horror films, but there are elements of horror films in every. Uh, in in every of uh, in every in your every movie, uh, is horror horror film are horror films really important in your life? Have they been important from you know your beginning as a cinephile? Yeah, I was a teenager. I was, I was obsessed with horror movie when I was a, a kid or a, a teenager. I don't think I'm a horror filmmaker today. I do love horror, I have to say, but sometimes it's. Today, especially, it's difficult to find good horror movie, except you know those guys who emerge, Ari Arister and stuff like Robert that. Robert Eggers. Yes, and, uh, yes, yeah. yeah. I do like them a lot, but I don't feel working in in a, in a in a peculiar genre. I have to say, 
I, I don't like that idea that we have to be in a box. I want to be in different boxes. I want to be in all the boxes. I don't care about one boxes. I don't want to be a labelized. I don't care about that. But I know today it's, once again, it's, you know, every festival have to be the label, you know, a different section and blah, blah, blah. And, but I, I feel, yeah, you're right. All my films have horror elements because it's my background. It's my first love. I love cinema, but my first love is, is, is horror. I was obsessed with horror as a teenager. Um, because horror at that time, in the, in the, in the 80s, the, 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 the films I, I, I used to watch in VHS was deeply, deeply unconventional and deeply uh, bushy, you know? Cronenberg, uh, Argento, all those guys are so, I have a great vision. And, and today I think horror is very childish and boring and only for make, 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 they, they make a lot of money with horror, but I don't think it's very, that kind of a look, that kind of regard, you know, on society, on people, on, on inner demons. There, there is, there is different. Of course, there is exception, of course, but, uh, yeah. but I try to do my, my best, you know, every movie I try to do my own way. I, I try to create my own filmography. I try to, to create my own path. That's what I, that's, that's all I want to do. I want to. I want to be. I want to be an old filmmaker with 15, or if I get lucky, 20, 20 films, and be proud of them. You know, that's all I want to do. That's that's how I want to get old. That's that's, that's my goal. That's that's my only goal in life. Yeah. You're talking. Uh, you're talking just right now about horrors. Uh, you know, horror movies, good horror movies, dealing with societal issues, with uh, the inner demons. Today we talked with Natalie Erika James, who made a very nice uh, Australian film, a, a horror film, Relic, and uh, she was talking about the same thing that the horror films can be very useful tool to tackle your inner demons. Like for example, in your film, in Vinian, uh, Vinian, you have we have this inner demon of loss, grief. Of guilt, which is uh, in your in, in your film in Vinian, it turns out to be impossible to overcome. Uh, uh, but uh, but yeah, this is that's why I always uh, that's why I don't want to labor your films in any way, but in a very good way. The, these are uh, horror films, but at the same time, you're talking about being in the uh, many boxes at the same time. There is a musical element to Alleluia also. So sometimes when I watch your films, I really don't. I, I, I really don't know what to expect in the next scene because it can turn from horror to musical. And from your reaction, I see that this is entirely uh, 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 this is entirely what you're aiming for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I I've realized also the limit of that, you know, because I'm not completely fool. I know it's an industry. I know you have your film has to make money. And I try to work on myself to keeping, you know, I, I made an American film. It was so, so, it was difficult in post. I made a, a big French film. It was terrible experience, you know, working with difficult people. I, I realized that I have to be free. I have to be my own, yeah, my, my own motor. I, I, I think... I try to to be myself with the experience I, I've get, you know, since since 15 years now, and to reach maybe I, I would love to make a movie that uh, to emerge, not emerge on a commercial aspect or worldwide, just to be a little bit more. Um, you know, you, you need attraction. You need people talking about your work to get you a bigger budget to make what you want to do. And it doesn't happen. I'm ready to work with 1.5, 2 million, if I get lucky, uh, on every film. But sometimes you want to grow. You want to you wanna, you wanna reach different... You, and also, there is the adventure. You want, you want to go in a different uh, direction. You understand what I mean? So for that, you have to deal with all the constraints of the industry. And sometimes is, the industry is very, very difficult, especially... Once again, today, with all the different, you know, with, with all the post-Me Too and all, the, look at in America, it's madness, you know. 
so how can and also the streaming how can you resist to to netflix to the to the television to the series um you know my, my once again my 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 old my my goal is to to uh, to create my my own filmography and sometimes even the american the the the, the, the great the great young director independent uh, filmmaker uh, you know they get the appeal of netflix of amazon and they dissolve in that huge industry they makes money of course they makes a lot of money but they not create their own thing they make remake look villeneuve you know i love villeneuve but why making dune why making blade runner a remake why 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 not create his own fucking thing I, 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 sometimes i I don't understand that. It's now. It's our turn now. We have to be alive now. We have to create exactly what we need to create now, not create the thing that's been created 30 years ago. Do you understand what I mean? So I guess you're not a big believer in, uh, in the theory that you can go, for example, to Hollywood and be this huge director in a... Uh, I, I, in a big industry and still be able to create your own thing because you know one can argue that for example Christopher Nolan makes big budget films but he he is lucky enough to make exactly the films he wants to yeah of course but Nolan is uh, probably um, one of the greatest alive director and I've I've worked there I work in I've worked I've worked in Hollywood for for one movie it was difficult and I realized a lot of stuff It was an experience, and I realized that maybe I'm not made for that. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not very politic, you know. In Hollywood, you have to be very, very politic because you have to deal with a lot of person. I'm maybe I'm too old school. I'm not. I don't want to be politic. I don't want to be politic with the executive, and I don't want. I want to do my own shit in my way. And that's that's probably the limit of my my work. But I want to do exactly my way. I don't want to do their way. I want to do my way. And let's see what happens, you know. But I realize today I have to be focused on my work. I don't, I don't. Of course, I need I need a success. I need to. I, I would love to have a film that emerge and could be worldwide, who gets worldwide attention. But maybe it won't happen. And. And and it's like that. I would need to be focused exactly on my fucking work, and that's why I try to do very sincerely and with great ambition. But I, you know, I, I don't live with the with the dream that I will be one day a, a great American director. I'm Belgian one. I love to work here, and I have a great team. Yeah, and honestly, okay. American cinema today, I don't like it. Mm. It's boring. So you believe that? Uh, so you believe that Nolan is a sort of exception to the rule that he yeah, is but, very... yeah, but he create he create his own family. Yeah. there is great American film director Paul Thomas Anderson. Yeah, of course. Aronofsky, there is great great guy, a great director. But but Christopher Nolan create his own family, just like uh, Clint Eastwood do it, did in in uh, 20 years ago. Yeah, he years makes ago, films with uh, with his own people. Yes, yeah. exactly, and I think it's very clever. And you need to be very, very clever. Uh, you need to be a kind of surum, you know. You have to be wow. It demands you a lot of lot, lot of work. And I remember I had a discussion with a uh, Parshon Walk, who uh, who made the who made that film in, with Nicole Kidman in Hollywood. Stalker. A few, yes, a few years ago. And and I was impre- I was I was surprised. He wanted to go back in America in Hollywood. I said, why? You have so much success in in Korea. You have a You go to Cannes, you go, you have so much success. And he said to me, "Well, you know, because if you achieve a, a, a good movie in Hollywood, it's it's because you 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 are probably one of the best director in the world because you have so many things to deal with. If you achieve something good, that's you are very, very, very good." <laughs> yeah, I can understand that point of view. Also, yeah. I, I wanted to ask you also in terms of your films because when I when when I watch your films uh, from Calvary to Adoration and then uh, I see uh, and I I don't know if you agree with that but uh, whatever terrible things happen in your film like murder or violence or you know this uh, let's let's say it maybe in brackets that the all the evil things that are that are, that are there uh, for me they. The way you portray them, it's they stem from the fact that people are lonely, people are in pain, people are in grief, and 
it may maybe of course it it doesn't fully justify their actions but f we, f your world world view and your view on humanity for me is like that all the th evil things with that uh, we do they mostly uh, come from the from the very from the fact that we are fragile we are in pain and so on and i don't know if you would we, you you would agree with that because that's how i feel about your films yeah you're right i think i, I do i do think that maybe i'm wrong i don't know but i always thought that that there is a the lack of love brings you to could bring you to a very bad position in fact and i would love to make a movie once about evil real evil real the real evil you know um, just like freaking did you know to 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 try to reach the, the essence you mean the exorcist evil. yeah Absolutely. Yeah. When you do a movie like that, you have to face evil, real evil. And um, my point of view on, 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 on character, on humanity today, it's, it's when people get crazy. It's, it's always come from, you know, maybe it's silly to say. It's always better to show, but um, comes from, yeah, uh, the impossibility to be loved or, or the lack of love, uh, uh, yeah, and I think it brings you, it, br it brings the character to um, a higher understanding of what we are, uh, what we need. We need to be touched, we need to be loved, we need to be, we need to love, we need to, yeah, we, we are very fragile in a way, you know, and of course I know there is evil somewhere and I would love to make a movie about evil, but I'm never face evil straightforward in, my, in any of my films. Um, that's, I think it's a good question. I think it's a good point because I don't believe I always resist at that, you know. For me, it comes f always from, a, it has to come from, but I'm very obsessed with the um, um, serial killer uh, um, stories and stuff like that. And I realize that some witnesses or uh, some, some stories uh, brings the idea that in the eyes, evil exists. And of course, evil exists. Of course, of course, but I never faced that again, and I will. I will probably someday. I would love to, and I think that's it's very tricky because when you do horror, especially today, I don't know how director one one thing that they have to face evil. I think it's it's very childish to to say, okay, I'm gonna do a horror film, but. It's gonna be for fun. No, it's not fun. Horror is not fun. Evil is not fun. If you do a horror film, you have to face evil. Straight in the eye. You have to do something. You have comments. You have to, you have to think about evil. I think it's very important to do that, especially today. What's, what, what's evil today? Who come from evil? I think it's very, very important question. From our conversation, I think uh, we can say that, firstly, there is a very good chance you will do a very serious horror film about evil, facing the evil, at some point in your career. Uh, so uh, if, if that happens, of course, we eagerly await that. I think it's also fair to say that, from, that uh, one conclusion from our conversation also is that if someone uh, waits for you to make a Hollywood film, don't hold your breath. Probably not going to happen. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not good at that. You yeah. know, I, it depends. It, it depends if you have freedom. If you, it depends on many, many, many. I'm not obsessed with fame and and money. You know. Of course, I love money, and I, I want to have enough fame to to makes me to 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 brings me uh, to uh, uh, to the path to another film. But I'm not obsessed with that. You know. I just obsessed with the path, you know, the road, and what can I do with my, my film? I, 
You know, I'm looking for myself. I, I, I have no idea. I'm looking for what I am. I'm looking, making films reveals a face or a side of, of me. Uh, and I try to learn about that. And I try to be better as a human and as a filmmaker. So it's now I realize that I don't want to make, I don't want to compromise myself anymore. Never. Well, what can I say? Good luck on that quest of knowing yourself better for your work. This is Octopus Film Festival and Fabrice Duveld was with us. Good luck with your film and thank you very much for this conversation. Thank you, Radek. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. <laughs>